Now the truth is scattered to the four corners of the earth. When ages pass, certain laws operate upon the stars in the heavens. Their ways change. There is movement and restlessness. They are no longer constant, and a great light appears redly in the skies. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear, and mountains will open up and built forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and sea, and the sea will boil. They will be eaten up in the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the, breath of the destroyer. Breaking news. We go live to San Francisco, where Leo Jax has the story. Yes, Claire. It's hard to believe that half of San Francisco is in ruins today, following the most devastating and the most baffling event in our nation's history. Uh, it's, it's a horrific situation here. Here is a very interesting prophecy text, the only prophecy that I found in all of the Colburn Bible, and it's a prophecy that's very relative to the Phoenix research. In the Book of Manuscripts 3.7, we read, Thus it was in the days of heavenly wrath which have gone, and thus it will be in the days of doom when it comes again. The times of its coming and going are known unto the wise. There are the signs of times we shall perceive the destroyer's return. A hundred and ten generations shall pass in the west, and nations will rise and fall. Men will fly in the air as birds and swim in the seas as fishes. Men will talk peace with one another. Hypocrisy and deceit shall have their day. Women will be as men, and men will be as women. Passion will be a plaything of man. Men shall be divided by their races, and the children will be born as strangers among them. Brothers shall strive with brother and husband against wife. Fathers will no longer instruct their sons, and the sons will be wayward. Women will become the common property of man, and will no longer be held in high regard and respect. Book of the Manuscript 310. In those days, men will have the great book before them. Wisdom will be revealed. The few will be gathered for a stand. It is the hour of trial. The dauntless ones will survive. The stout-hearted will not go down in destruction. The, of course, evidently, there will be people who are awakened in the last day who will survive the Phoenix return with little loss. Thank you for giving me the strength and the conviction to complete the task you entrusted to me. Thank you for guiding me straight and true through the many obstacles in my path. And for keeping me resolute when all around seemed lost. Thank you for your protection and for your many signs along the way. Thank you for any good that I may have done. I'm so sorry about the bad. The text continues, O oh, mortal men who wait without understanding, where will you hide yourselves in the dread days of doom, when the heavens shall be torn apart and the skies rent in twain, in the days when children will turn gray-headed? This is the thing which will be seen. This is the terror your eyes will behold. This is the form of destruction that will rush upon you. There will be a great body of fire, the glowing head with many mouths and eyes ever changing. Terrible teeth will be seen in formless mouths. You underestimate me. Manuscripts chapter 5, verse 1. The doom shape called the destroyer in Egypt was seen in all lands thereabouts. In color it was bright and fiery, in appearance changing and unstable. It twisted about itself like a coil, like water bubbling into a pool from an underground water supply. And all men agree it was the most fearsome sight. It was not a great comet or a loosened star. It was more like a fiery body of flame. Its movements on high were slow. Below it swirled in the manner of smoke and it remained close to the sun whose face it hid. Remember, Phoenix routinely hides the sun. There was a bloody redness about it, which changed as it passed along its course. It caused death and destruction in its rising and setting. It swept the earth with a gray cinder rain and caused many plagues, hunger, and other evils. It bit the skin of men and beasts until they became mottled with sores. The earth was troubled and shook. The hills and mountains moved and rocked. The, the dark smoke filled the heavens bowed over earth, and a great howl came to the ears of living men, born to them upon the wings of the wind. It was the cry of the dark lord, the master of dread. Thick clouds of fiery 
of smoke passed before him, and there was an awful hail of hot snow and coals of fire, and shot out bright lightnings. The channels of water were turned back unto themselves when the land tilted, and great trees were tossed about and snapped like twigs. Then a voice like ten thousand trumpets was heard over the wilderness, and before its burning breath the flames parted. The whole of the land was moved, and mountains melted. The sky itself roared like ten thousand lions in agony, and bright arrows of blood spit back and forth across its face. narrative original description of a historically known object doom shape now in the book of manuscripts chapter 5 verse 4 this is what we have this was the aspect of the doom shape called the destroyer when it appeared in days long gone by in olden times it is thus described in the old records few of few of which remain it is said that when it appears in the heavens above earth splits open heat like a nut roasted before the fire then flames shoot up through the surface and leap about like fiery fiends upon a black upon black blood the moisture inside the land is all dried up the pastures and cultivated places are consumed in flames and they and all trees become white ashes the doom shape is like a circling ball of flame which scatters soft spring in its train it covers about a fifth part of the entire sky and sends writhing snake-like fingers down to earth. Before it, the sky appears frightened, and it breaks up and scatters away. The day is no brighter than night. Remember, Phoenix chief attribute, dar attribute is darkening the sun. It spawns a host of terrible things. These are things said of the destroyer in the old records. Read them with solemn heart, knowing that the doom shape has its appointed time and will return. It would be foolish to let them go unheeded. Now, men say, such things are not destined for our days, but they are wrong. Chapter 6, The Dark Days. Book of Manuscripts. Now we see the phoenix visits, visits Egypt. This is the Exodus Cataclysm. Book of Manuscripts 6-1. The dark days begin with the last visitation of the destroyer, and they were foretold by strange omens in the skies. All men were silent and went about with pale faces. Are you listening to me? I am now. Good. You listening to me? Yeah. Good. Put that hand on me again, you won't get it back. The leaders of the slaves, which had built the city to the glory of Thom, Thutmose, stirred up unrest, and no man raised his arm against him. They foretold great events of which the people were ignorant, and of which temple seers were not informed. These were days of ominous calm, when the people waited for they, they knew not. The presence of an unseen doom was felt. The hearts of men were stricken. Laughter was heard no more, and grief and wailing sounded throughout the land. Even the voices of children were stilled, and they did not play together, but stood silent. The slaves became old and insolent, and women were the possession of any man. Fear walked the land, and women became barren with terror, for they could not conceive, and those with child aborted. All men closed up within themselves. The days of stillness were followed by a time when the noise of trumpeting and shrilling was heard in the heavens, and the people became as frightened beasts without a herdsman. The public records were cast forth and destroyed, and no man knew who were slaves and who were masters. The people cried out to Pharaoh in their distress, but he stopped his ears and acted like a deaf man. There were those who spoke falsely before Pharaoh, Pharaoh in those times, and had gods hostile towards the land therefore the people cried out for their blood to appease it but it was not these strange priests who put strife in the land instead of peace for one was that even was of the household of pharaoh and walked among the people unhampered 
dust and smoke clouds darkened the sky and colored the waters upon which they fell with a bloody hue. Plague was throughout the land. The river was bloody and blood was everywhere. The water was vile and men's stomachs shrank from drinking.